Howdy folks. I often get asked for advice about what gear a beginner should start with and to be honest it's difficult recommending a first plane because the, the, fir the, the best beginner's plane doesn't really exist I don't think but I have no hesitation recommending this as the best beginner's radio. This is the Flysky FSI6 6 channel uh, programmable radio. Uh, it was sent to me by TomTop.com um, thanks very much TomTop uh, purchase link is in the description if you want to check it out. It's a very cheap radio, very very capable. Great range, um, great features. It has a 20 model memory which means you can uh, buy 19 more receivers for it. Have it in a total of 20 different models all flying uh, with the one radio. It operates on the AFHDS2A uh, protocol automatic frequency hopping digital system protocol uh, the 2A version of that another great thing about this radio is that the uh, open source hackers have got onto it and started writing new firmware for it so there's actually new firmware available for this radio that uh, turns it into a 10 channel radio along with other enhancements if you game enough to reflash the firmware but uh, as it is uh, it's a fantastic 6 channel radio now although I'm recommending this for beginners uh, it's also an, an intermediate and advanced capable radio as well. It will uh, grow with you as you get more and more complex models and, and want to do some more complex programming. Now as well as the four channels on the sticks you have three two position switches and a three position switch and two uh, potentiometers as well. You can use these for things like uh, deploying flaps or landing gear or a, pan, uh, a panning camera head or something like that. Uh, and in future videos I'll give you some examples of different ways to use all these switches and different sorts of programming that you can do with it. Now as well as the 2A version of the, of the protocol you can use the, you can turn the 2A um, version off and just use the AFHDS protocol uh, and that means that you can use all of these receivers as well made by Flysky I think but Turnergy and Hobby King uh, 8 channel, 6 channel and 3 channel receivers that I use with my old 9X radio. On the AFHDS protocol all of these will work with this radio. Now the supplied receiver is already bound to the radio or it should be anyway um, and that's a six channel receiver uh, and it has diversity antennas, that's two antennas uh, so that you can orient them at different angles on your uh, model for the best possible range uh, and the transmitter actually has two aerials as well. This is quite a small radio, it's quite slim which is great for small uh, teenagers and kids hands uh, but I still find it quite comfortable to use. Compare it to my um, full-sized Tyrannus radio you can see it's quite a lot slimmer but that means it sort of slips in your bag very easily uh, and you can hold it one hand and fly it quite easily. Now I'll show you uh, some of the functions of the radio. We've got uh, switch A, switch B, which are both two position switches. Switch C, which is a three position switch. Switch D, variometer A and variometer B. Now on the front we have up down buttons and a bind button. Uh, OK and cancel and power on. If you turn it on and all your switches aren't in the back position or the up position or your throttle is in the, in the right spot, it will give you a warning and won't give you control of the, um, the transmitter. So first of all you have to put the throttle down and the switches in their up position, then you get control. And it shows you which protocol you're on, that's the AFHDS2A, transmitter battery, good little graph there, which model you're on, this is model 01 and it's called Flysky01 backlight goes off you just push a button again to get it to come on. I have my receiver I have a 5 volt, 5 volt battery here that I can power the receiver I'll plug that into the 3. I have a servo which I'll plug into channel 1 and note that the dark lead or the brown lead goes to the outside. That's plugged in now watch the transmitter when I turn this on. So you can see that we're now getting the transmitter voltage and the internal voltage of the receiver 
and an error message there as well. That tells you how many error packages your the radio is detecting from the receiver. That's a good feature of this 2A protocol. So now I'll plug that into channel 1. Ailerons are on channel 1, that should, should work. And there it is. That's working. Let's try, we'll plug that into channel 2. So that's in channel 2, so that's not going to work, but that's now the elevator. That's in channel 2. Now, what if I want to use uh, one of these non-2A style uh, receivers with this radio? Uh, well, we'll go in to receiver setup, turn that off, the AFH DS2A is off. Now we're on the AFHDS. Just cancel out of that. Tells you on the front there it's AFHDS. Now, but this receiver isn't bound to this model, so I need to use the uh, bind plug and pop that in. Uh, I think it's up the top. Plug in my battery turn the radio off. Now, if I turn the power onto the transmitter, you'll see there's a, a red flashing light there. That's not bound to anything. Hold down the bind button, turn the radio on, and it goes into receiver binding. And you can see uh, the LED has stopped flashing. That means the receiver is now bound. So turn it off, turn it off, pull that out, I can plug in a servo just to make sure it's working. Radio on. And there we have, there we have a, a different six channel uh, receiver working with this radio. Now, now I'll go through some of the functions on the radio. Gosh, it's raining heavily outside. Uh, if you try and turn it on with the throttle is not in the uh, down position, it'll give you a warning. Same with switches too, so you've got to put the throttle down, switches in their up position, then you'll get control of the radio. Now it tells you which protocol we're on. We're on the 2A protocol, you can turn that off. If the back, back light goes off, you just push a button to turn it back on again. Model number one, and the model number one has been called FlySky01, which you can, you can change. Uh, so if we hold the OK button down, we get into the system menu, select the model and up and down you can select through 20 models. You can name them whatever you want. Model name, so then you can uh, alphabetically uh, sort of type in uh, different model names, say I want to call this one the, the Bixler. So there it's called the Bixler. Now if you just press press cancel or OK, you'll lose that. You have to, to if you make changes, to save the changes, you have to push and hold cancel. And there. Now check it again and it's called the Bixler. Now when you're first setting up uh, a model, you have to select what, what type you want. You can choose aeroplane or glider or a variety of helicopter. Uh, types that I don't really understand so we're just going to stick with aeroplane or glider. Model copy, if you've already got a, cop a model set up the way you want it and you want to copy that onto another model then you can use the model copy. You can reset the model back to uh, its original state. Uh, receiver setup. So here we choose AFHDS 2A or just AFHDS. Uh, in the 2A protocol you get all these extra um, choices as well. You can buy sensors for the telemetry, uh, you can set up the fail safe, you can initiate PPM output and uh, that's all advanced stuff, we won't worry about that for the moment. I'll turn the AFHDS off and you can see now we don't get all those choices. But when you choose this protocol you can use all the uh, 9x receivers as well. Go down again, you can initiate set up trainer mode where you connect two radios to, ra where you connect two radios together. Uh, so like a, a trainer and a student. Uh, I don't really know how to do that at the moment. Sticks mode, I am in mode two, but you can change that if you want to. Uh, I don't see why you would want to. L City Bryce, brightness, firmware version, and here's where you update the firmware as well. And you can do a factory reset. Alright, so we'll go over to the 
uh, function set up and in here you can reverse any of the channels that you if you find a channel is operating in the wrong direction such as the ailerons going in the wrong direction and I'll demonstrate that later on in a in a um, setup video this is the screen that you can reverse any of the channels so uh, say channel 2 you want to reverse you just hit the up or down uh, now channel 3 is usually the throttle you do not want to reverse the throttle that will cause problems don't do it and if you're mucking around with programming make sure you take the prop off before you start changing any of these things because if you accidentally hit the reverse throttle you may well get the throttle going at full <laughs> full revs as my nephew Harry found out in points this is for adjusting how far each servo moves you, um, you best to leave those alone for the moment uh, display this is a very useful screen it will show you uh, the position of each channel channel 3 is the throttle you can see the throttle going from 0 up to 100 uh, 1 is ailerons 2 is elevator 3 is auxiliary channels you've got four channels on the sticks up down left right with each stick uh, but you've also got the four switches and the two variometers that you can assign to channels as well so at the moment channel 5 is uh, assigned to variometer A which is this one here and uh, channel 6 is assigned to variometer B. Sub trim, uh, so that is adjusting the center point of the servo or where the servo, servo is at rest. Very useful. Dual rates and expo. Now, at the, the, the radio comes set up with uh, dual rates on the switch A and it switches between uh, that's this one here, normal mode and sport mode. And you can set up different uh, amounts of travel and and sort of softness around the center for each of these two modes. The factory default is to have everything at 100% rate and zero uh, expo. Uh, it's more usual to have something like 30% uh, expo um, on all your channels or on ailerons, uh, elevator and rudder. Uh, I find that just makes it a little bit softer uh, and easier to, to control around the center area of each stick. Uh, I'll explain more of that in a future video. Throttle curve, you can change the uh, sort of the speed of application of the throttle by, by changing that. Uh, and this is the mix screen. You have three mixes where you can mix two channels together in some way. Um, for example, if you, uh, if you have flaps on your plane and whenever you put the flaps down the, the plane wants to balloon up, you can mix in a little bit of down elevator. Again, I'll demonstrate that later on. Elevon mixing, this is for flying wings where you only have two uh, aileron slash elevators uh, that d does the mixing automatically for you there. Same with the V-tail. Uh, you can assign all the switches to different functions. I'll demonstrate them later on. Throttle hold, you can, you can set up a like a safety switch that turns the throttle off. So no matter whether you bump it or not, uh, it won't fire up. Uh, and that's all. So in the package you get the radio, the receiver and bind plug. You also get a little CD which might have the manual on it, I'm not too sure, but it's a mini CD so I can't actually play it to find out. Uh, even so, you can easily search for the uh, i6 manual online and, and download it. So there we have the Flysky FS i6 6 channel 20 model programmable radio from tomtop.com and check out the description for the purchase link. And this in my book is the best beginner radio available and at a really budget price too. Thanks for watching.